And uh, I've actually pulled the ride and he said it actually goes unbelievably well with that canned possum. You're a bit fortunate tonight due to Ronnie's inability to make a decision, so uh, you got a two for one, and then both Danny and I make up half of the best men. <laughs> so make sure you got enough uh, corn liquor in your glass for two toasts. Ten years ago, just short of ten years ago, uh, I married the love of my life. And Ronnie stood by my side in Sydney, Australia, as we said our I do's and vows. And we were, there was so much excitement and anticipation at the rehearsal dinner, because Ronnie had been telling me for months that he was going to bring it at the rehearsal dinner. <laughs> and those of you who've seen Ronnie bring it, I give the man credit. <laughs> he can bring it. <laughs> And it meant a lot to myself and Amanda because Ronnie was the first one of my friends that Amanda met when she moved all the way from Australia. And we've been through a number of things together. We slept on the floor out here in Hermosa the first night that we arrived in LA together, in his apartment with no furniture. So we were unbelievably excited about this. And I'll never forget that rehearsal dinner. Ronnie stood up, he looked at me and Amanda straight in the eye. He said, Jonesy, Amanda, and then he broke into a puddle of tears and cried like a two-year-old and never finished the speech. <laughs> so I wanted to thank Brody on behalf of both me and Danny for setting the bar so low. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so Jonesy and I are going to do a little tag team, as you can tell. And I met Ronnie in 2001. And the yeah. first time I met Ronnie, uh, we went to grad school together. Um, but I met Ronnie on the basketball court. And my first impression of Ronnie was, I don't know if I love this guy or I hate this guy. Because <laughs> all he did was just yap, 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 yap. So I was feeling pretty hot. I, I hit a couple three-pointers. I'm feeling really good about myself. And they called sort of, it wasn't really a timeout, but the ball went out of bounds. And Ronnie says, well, somebody guard this motherfucker. He is shooting the ball like a constipated man. He can't be making those three-pointers on us. So at that point, I said, I hate this guy. <laughs> but years went by, and I learned to love him. And the moment I met Nina, uh, I could tell that there was something different. And with Nina, the first time I realized that Nina was going to be the woman that Ronnie marries, she beat him in one-on-one -on, -one on the basketball court. Legitimate, legitimate. So because of all these years that I've known Ronnie, and because of me being a quarter of the best man, I do understand some of the challenges that are going on within their relationship. So challenge number one, and this is what I call location. And location means where they live. See, Ronnie is a bit of a creature of habit. Ronnie lives in a small apartment with Nina. It's maybe 500 square feet. And these are, you know, pretty tall individuals. And for over a year, or actually for five years, he keeps talking about moving. And the crazy thing is, is he keeps making more money, he keeps making more money, and he doesn't want to move. And I can't understand that. And it just dawned on me. And I was driving around the neighborhood the last couple of weeks, and a light bulb went off. And I realized that the reason is because Ronnie loves Krispy Kreme donuts. <laughs> and Ronnie happens to live within the only walking distance of the only Krispy Kreme donut place in the entire United States, or at least the western part of Los Angeles. <laughs> So, I think one of the things that I can do to help you, Nina, to prove to Ronnie that you can move out of this location is that you need to provide him with Krispy Kreme donuts whenever he needs them. And I have done my first gift for you tonight. Krispy Kreme donuts. Included, included inside is a gift certificate for the first dozen donuts. And until you continue to do this, you are not going to move. So that's challenge number one. Challenge number two is going to come up a little bit. Nina, you know that Ronnie's a special guy. <laughs> special in a number of ways, not just 
the special ed thing. That was totally inappropriate last night. <laughs> but he's special in so, in so many ways. One of the things that, uh, about Ronnie is that um, all the people that you know, there are very few people who literally the mere mention of their name brings a smile to the people who know. You say Ronnie, people go, <laughs> and that, that laugh cackle of his is in and of itself legendary. Over the years, Ronnie has developed a highly enlightened sense of self-deprecating humor. And, and honestly, I think it's been developed in response to repeated attacks on his well-endowed nose. <laughs> kneecaps that are slightly larger than his calves. <laughs> and an unusually aggressive George Jefferson-like receding hairline. <laughs> but despite of these challenges, yeah. Ronnie maintains a genuineness, a self-belief, and a belief in the two of you that has never wavered. Oh. Okay, so now for challenge number two. I'm going to call this control. So Ronnie is used to having a lot of control. Ronnie manages a large group of people. Ronnie loves to put events together. Um, I feel like me and my wife, Alice, right there, uh, we're sort of responsible for this. We gave, we gave him the ultimate control of giving him the deputy commissioner of a day to actually marry the two of us. So Ronnie doesn't know how to relinquish control. And I'm telling you right now, Ronnie, trust me, you are no longer in control of your home. <laughs> and as a symbol of this, um, I now have, for Nina, a gavel, because she is the new judge in town. <laughs> It'd be almost irresponsible to stand up here and talk tonight and not mention Ronnie's immense love of the game of basketball. Yeah. Uh, we already heard about who's the better player, but <laughs> still that love of basketball is, is so important and has defined him. And fortunately for me, I've actually been there to experience you know, a few highlights of his career along the way. So I just wanted to share with you guys a few of them. <laughs> just a couple of them that I thought would be relevant tonight. Um, you know, Ronnie and, 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 and Ricardo Diaz, um, AKA Ricky D, our leader today, uh, they played on a pretty highly, highly competitive um, intramural basketball team. Uh, and I, I remember seeing the year they, they, uh, they came away with the championship, came away with the championship. And you know, I think this was probably the highlight of Ronnie's basketball career. <laughs> he, he soared to great heights with that intramural championship. <laughs> but more importantly, I never forget that in order to commemorate his contributions to the team coming off the bench, he was awarded the sixth man of the year. Yeah. <laughs> for Georgetown intramural basketball. And, and, and that, was, that, was, that was big, that was big for him. So we were, we were really proud of him for that. <laughs> you know, oh, in light of... In light, of, in light of his recent demise, uh, after exploding his Achilles tendon and losing that half a step he didn't really have, I have been told that there's a rematch on the books between Ronnie and Nina. And what I find to be so interesting is, is not the fact that there's a rematch. I expect there to be a lot of matches in the next few years while Ronnie can still actually walk. <laughs> But that in talking to a number of people here, the odds makers, Nina's definitely two to one favorite. And <laughs> even Big Ron has $20 and a jar of Johnson City's finest moonshine on Nina. Oh! He's got no left. No left. So I'm here to tell you, it's your best man. I got your back. I got your back. I believe in you. You can win. <laughs> All right, so in lieu of the third challenge, so Ron, Ronnie had me pulled a lot of the And uh, when I got here and I started looking at that 
program, and I, I see my name, and I see these beautiful paragraphs written about everybody, talking about their children, talking ah. about their lives, talking about all these things. And like me, I don't even know what it means, but you know what? I'm gonna bring it into play here because Ronnie's learned this tradition, and there is this thing in the Judaism tradition when you get married called breaking the glass. And breaking the glass means there's a bunch of different meanings, but the one that I like the most is that through your relationship, there's going to be challenges. Um, you're going to go through ups and downs. Um, but what happens is, is that you always remember the time when you were whole. So right now, Ronnie, I want you to come up. I want you to break this glass. Yeah. You gave this to yourself. <laughs> Alice, my beautiful wife, is going to come on up here. It's wrapped, so don't worry. It's not going to get on the floor. And I'm, I'm wondering if Ronnie has enough power to do what us Jews can really do. So I wanted to finish up by, um, on a slightly more serious note, slightly more serious note, uh, and talking about boy Ryan on this special day is, it, it would, there's a lot of cliches that we could use to describe, you know, our relationship. Uh, he's like my brother, he's like this or like that. Um, but over the years, the reality is that the relationship between Ryan and myself it's kind of a small piece of the story. I mean, you guys have seen today my kids running around. Ronnie's godfather to my son. He's Uncle Roro to my other kids. He's a trusted friend and confidant to me and my wife. You know, there really isn't a cliche. I, we, I just call it family. She's just family. And Nina, Nina, it's amazing. When Ronnie talks about you, Literally, you can feel the smile behind his words when he talks about you. It's like the presence, your presence in his life makes his light shine brighter. You know, Ronnie's family and his family is my family. And I'm, I would feel blessed to have you a part of it. So if everyone could raise their white lightning. <laughs> let's give a toast to the bride and groom. Ronnie, Nia, we love you dearly. We wish you a lifetime of happiness. Lots of babies. To my kids to babies. <laughs> Cheers. Man, that's a tough act to follow.